name we pray. Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name. And I pray that the Spirit of God will take every word we read, every word we learn, and imprint it in every heart, and give us the grace and the strength to go forth and be obedient to the word in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. Thank you for every brother, every sister, every boy, and every girl. Thank you, Lord, for the interest, for the love you have given us to come study your word. We pray, Lord, the study of the word tonight will strengthen everyone in Jesus' name. What we ought to know, what we ought to do, what we ought to understand, we pray, Lord, your grace will make available in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. Help us to live in consciousness that you are with us every time. And you are watching us, and you are looking at whether we are carrying out what you yourself, by your spirit, have taught us, in Jesus' name. Make us obedient to your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Tonight we come to study from 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And we're learning from verse 1 all through to verse 4. Please open your Bible with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading from verse 1. Now, concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Then in verse 2, it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him his tongue, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And then in verse 3, it says, And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your liberality, your contribution unto Jerusalem. And I in verse 4, And if it be meet, suitable, if that's right, that I go also, they shall go with me. As we look at those verses of scripture, they are familiar verses to everyone, to all those who have been coming to the church, to our church, because we quote the verses often. But the Lord wants us to see here that there is a commitment of everyone, every saint, every child of God, to profitable service among the saints. Practical commitment, not just a mental commitment, a doctrinal commitment, an emotional commitment, an occasional commitment, a practical commitment to serving the church, to serving the Lord, to serving the saints of God in a profitable way that will ease their problems, alleviate their pain, minister to the needs of their lives. And when we talk of saints, we're talking of the church. The church is a gathering, an assembly of the saints of God. And so, as we talk about service to the saints, among the saints, by the saints, we're talking about the service you have, the service I have, the contribution you have, the contribution I have as children of God, as saints of God, to the saints, to meet the need of the saints of the church. That's why tonight, as we look at these verses, we're talking about practical commitment to profitable service among saints. There are three things we're looking at as we study the uh, scriptures today. Number one, 
the call and character of saints in Christ. As you look at verse 1, it talks about now concerning the collection for the saints. And so we need to know who the saints are because the saints are at the center of the passage itself. The saints are at the foundation of the passage we're looking, we're looking at. Without the saints, all the verses are meaningless. The saints, what's their calling? What's their character? How do we position them? How do we recognize them so that we can serve them appropriately? Number one, the call and character of saints in Christ. Number two, the consecration and contribution of saints in all churches. The church is ecclesia, the people who are called out of the world. And so the church is different from the world, is distinct from the world, and the church should be separated and differentiated from the world. And if the saints in the church, if the people of God, if the children of God have any need, the need is to be supplied by the need, by the saints in the church. Because the church now is caught up, is separated from the world. And so we need to know the consecration and the contribution of saints in all churches. Number three is the collection and the care for saints in crisis. There are times individual saints are not able to care for themselves. They are not able to provide for themselves. And so it becomes our responsibility as children of God, as followers of Christ, as saints in Christ, to provide for the saints in a crisis. The collection and care for saints in a crisis. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. Now, concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so you Corinthians do. Even so, as all the churches have got instruction, you are also getting instruction, and even so in that same way, act and do and obey the instruction that has been given now we're collecting for the saints we need to know who the saints are if you're giving out something and you're told give it to so and so and give it to such and such you need to know who so and so is you need to know who such and such is that's the reason we're looking at according to the scriptures who are the saints the call of the saints according to the scriptures how do we recognize them their conduct their character their behavior their lifestyle their graciousness the evidence of grace in their lives the character of saints and when we talk of saints we're talking of people who are in Christ no matter how polished, no matter how moral, no matter how self-righteous a person is outside Christ, is not a saint. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone on earth, whether he goes to church or he doesn't go to church, everyone in the world, every child, everyone every man every woman born by a woman is a sinner it says from the time they are born they keep on telling lies they keep on acting lies because that is the nature they were sinners by nature were sinners by birth were sinners by practice and it is when you come to the lord 
and you turn away from your sin and you repent and totally you tell the Lord I confess because I've been convicted and now I abandon, I reject all those sins and you ask for forgiveness from the Lord and he forgives you and the testimony of the Spirit of God in your heart is that your sins are forgiven your life is cleansed and your sins are purged away then with that testimony of the Spirit of God in your heart you are in Christ you are born again you are converted and you turn from being a sinner to being a saint saints in Christ look at uh, Philippians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 1 Philippians chapter 1 verse 1 Paul and Timothy the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus saints in Christ Jesus outside Christ there is no sage outside Christ there's no righteous one outside Christ there is no child of God it's only when you are in Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons look at verse 9 what characterizes the life of that man of that woman that is referred to as a saint in Christ and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment when you come to Christ you come on the basis of knowledge you know you are a sinner knowledge you know Christ is Savior and the only Savior without him there's no salvation that's knowledge then you understand he commands that you repent of your sin that's the knowledge and then that whosoever will call on the name of the lord whosoever will believe you call believingly he will be saved that's the knowledge and now that you come on the basis of the knowledge of who god is who christ is what salvation is you now continue you are bound in that knowledge more and more and in all judgment and then in verse 10 it tells us in verse 10 that he may approve that things that are excellent when you come to Christ the Lord opens your eyes you are now able to approve of the things that are excellent that he may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ that's a saint that they call that the character of his saint that now everything he does he does from his heart there is sincerity and there is no deliberate offense because he has abandoned sin and he has come to a life of righteousness who is a saint a saint is someone who has recognized he was a sinner he has turned unto the Lord he has believed on the Lord there is no salvation there's no condemnation now in his heart and the Spirit of God is bearing witness with his heart he is a child of God and then he continues to conduct his life in the knowledge of the Lord and in judgment that he is a decision according to the Word of God and he lives a sincere life a transparent life and is without offense day by day and he continues he wants to continue like that until the day of christ and then in verse 11 we're told it says being filled with the fruits of righteousness all the other fruits of unrighteousness of sin and sinfulness all that has been cut off and now he lives to have and to produce the fruit of righteousness which are by G Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God in Romans chapter 1 reading from verse 6 Romans chapter 1 verse 6 among whom 
are ye also the cult of Jesus Christ? Underline that word call. You see, when we come to the Lord, it's because we've heard the call. We were sinners and He called us. We were righteous and He called us. And then the Spirit of the Lord said, The Lord, the Savior, is calling you. And it is called to repentance. It is called to faith in Christ. It is called unto the Lord that you abandon the past and then you receive Him, accept Him, and believe Him as your personal Savior. We are called on Jesus Christ. Verse 7 then tells us to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saved. Called to be saved. Sometimes you are here, there are some preachers who are reading their Bibles upside down and they say, we are sinners saved by grace. There's no way in the New Testament where God, where Christ, where the Holy Spirit, where the preachers, where the apostles called the believers sinners. We are saints sustained by grace. Not sinners who are saved by grace. We were, we were sinners, but now we're saints and we're living by grace. We're saints, we're sustained by the grace of God. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you. And peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was waiting for a good amen there. First Corinthians chapter 1, reading from verse 1. In First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustain us our brother. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. There we are, called to be saints. We must have that consciousness. I am called to be a saint and must live as a saint. I must conduct my life. I must live my life by the grace of God, in the knowledge of the Lord, in all sincerity and in righteousness, by the power of the Spirit of God as saints. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. We read from the New Testament. What does the Old Testament say about saints? Let's turn to the Old Testament now. Psalm 50, I'm reading from verse 5. In Psalm 50, verse 5, gather my saints. They are the saints of God. We are the children of God. We have made covenant with the Lord. We are converted. And he says, they are my saints. Gather my saints together unto me. That forms the church. A saint there, a saint there, a saint there. And then we gather together to study the word of God. That's church. Or we gather together to worship the Lord every first day of the week that's church we gather together for revival for renewal and for worship that is church but we are saints gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ now gathers us together he sacrificed he paid the price and because of that price we believe on the lord jesus christ we're saved and that makes us saints that's our calling what's our character look at verse 23 in verse 23 whoso offereth praise glorifieth me our lives praise the lord our lives honor the lord 
our lives glorify the Lord and as we live to the glory of God as we live to the praise of the Lord in everything we do from our heart and we do it sincerely then we're the saints of God who offer praise glorifying him and to him that ordereth his conversation aright that's a saint that's a saint what he says how he talks what he communicates he orders his conversation aright well i show the salvation the deliverance of the lord we're looking at psalm 85 reading from verse 8 the saints the call of saints and the character of saints psalm 85 reading from verse 8 i will hear what God the Lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people who are his people and to his saints the saints the saints are the people of God the saints are the people that God claims they are my children and because we're his children we live to glorify him and he will speak peace unto his people to his says look at this but let them not turn again to folly sin is foolishness sinning is foolishness backsliding is foolishness it says he will speak peace unto his people he will speak peace to his saints but don't let those saints go back to their old life let them not turn again to folly in ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 be therefore followers of god as dear children not as children that cause sorrow for heaven sorrow for the heart of god sorrow for our savior who paid the price who shared his blood but you live as followers of god as dear precious beloved children look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 and walk in love those are the saints of God those are the people of God those are the real children of God those are the people that appreciate Calvary they appreciate the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ he loved us so much that he gave his life and he shed his blood he paid the utmost price for our salvation and because of the love he has for us we reciprocate that love and now we walk in love as christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and his sacrifice to god for his sweet smelling savor What's the consequence of that? Look at verse 3. In verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness, pornography, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. A person who goes into immorality is not living according to the calling and the character of a saint a person who is unclean unclean language dirty language dirty behavior private secret uncleanness is not living according to the call of the saint according to the character of the saint a person who is into uncleanness into pornography it's all the time in the day and in the night and is sopping the net and privately is enjoying evil that's not a saint a person is a real child of god is conscious of the presence of god with him all the time he knows he's called to be a saint he knows he should have the character of the saint in the private in the public when alone and when he with other people he lives clean and he lives clear no fornication no uncleanness no lasciviousness 
no pornography and there is no evil there's no covetousness he lives to the glory of god and then in verse 4 in verse 4 it says neither filthiness nor foolish talking gossiping is out of his character and maligning other people out of his character abusive language insulting language out of his character lying tongue guile deception out of his character it says not jesting which are not convenient but rather the giving of thanks it tells us in colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 verse 2 the saints remember the saints have a calling and the calling of the sage is that there is a definite act of conversion. There is a definite experience of salvation. And with that conversion and salvation, there is a new life. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things, old character, old habit, old sinfulness, old death, old corruption, passed away and behold all things become new that is the calling that is the character of the saints in colossians chapter 1 verse 2 to the saints and faithful brethren in christ those who are unfaithful to christ they're not saints those are unfaithful to the teaching of Christ. They are not saints. Those are unfaithful to the expectation of Christ. They are not saints. The saints are the faithful in Christ. And it says grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. It's talking to the saints faith in christ jesus the faith that gets forgiveness and the faith that receives freedom freedom from sin and the faith that receives a new life in christ we heard of your faith living faith we heard of your faith converting faith saving faith that faith you had in christ and of the love which ye have to all the saints you are a saint and they are saints and your calling is to have love to all the saints and then it tells us in verse 10 it says that she might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing is saying to the one that is walking and living and acting and behaving at all times worthy of the of pleasing unto the lord being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god is interested in the knowledge of the word of god he comes to the bible study his heart is at the bible study and when he's there his all concentration heart mind soul spirit ears everything given uh, unto the lord and is obeying the word that is learning that she might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing uh, being fruitful in every good work it's not having a mixture of good work and bad work righteous work and simple work up and down no in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god and then in verse 11 it says strengthen with all might you know saints are the people that they read the word the word strengthens them and the spirit of god strengthens them and they know like they have strengthens them and their conviction strengthens them they are strengthened with all might according to the glorious power unto patience all patience and long suffering with joyfulness and then in verse 12 it says giving thanks unto the father is not the one going about grumbling all the time and criticizing all the time unhappy all the time well, in long face all the time a saint of God having the presence of the spirit of God in him is giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance 
of the saints in light. The saints don't walk in darkness. The saints don't walk in secret sin. The saints in light. And then in verse 13, it says, Who has delivered us saints from the power of of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in verse 14 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood the saints are con they, they are conscious of the redemption they have through his blood even the forgiveness of sins that's already settled and because that is settled, the pool of sin is not having authority or power over them anymore. They're free because they have been forgiven, they have been set free, they have been cleansed, they have been transformed, their lives have been changed. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 12, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 12, And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one toward another. We never forget ourselves who are saints. The saints never forget this is our calling and this is our character and this is our nature and this is our behavior and this is our connection with the other people. They never forget themselves and then plunge themselves into hatred. The Lord makes you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you look at verse 13 in verse 13 to the end for the purpose he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness holiness righteousness saints holiness saints uprightness saints a clear life, a clean life, a beautiful life, a life that is yielded unto the Lord and to the Lord alone. A person who has got the grace of God and has got the presence of the Lord in him and because of that grace of God and because of that presence of God, he has the grace and the strength to live in holiness. He loves holiness. He cherishes holiness. Holiness. He embraces holiness. He lives in holiness. That is the natural thing for a child of God who is called to be a saint. To the end, for the purpose, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. You see that? Holiness before man. Anybody can pretend. Anybody can learn all the, you know, how they say it and what they do and how they act. And anybody can do an outward thing. You know? That's before man. This one is saying to the one that is called out of sin into holiness. And it is holiness before God. Even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. I pray this experience will be permanent in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. It tells us in a first uh, that's uh, in a second Thessalonians chapter one, uh, and we're reading from verse 10. Second Thessalonians chapter one, uh, reading from verse 10. It says, When he shall come uh, to be glorified in his saints, the children of God who are living simply life, holy life righteous life a life without spot without wrinkle and without blemish when christ comes then all those saints of god that's the one they have been expecting and christ shall come to be glorified in a sense to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day and then in verse 11 it tells us wherefore also we pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling the calling to be a sage and then fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with 
power and then in verse 12 it says that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him you know if you do something simple the name of the Lord will not be glorified in you if you do something foolish talk something foolish if people catch you in that pornography and they look at you you'll have shame and then you'll not be glorifying the Lord but you see when you're a real child of God and you understand the calling of the child of God we're called to be saved and our character is the character of the saints it says the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in you and you he in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in Revelation chapter 19, reading from verse 7, Revelation chapter 19, reading from verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice. Hold on. We know Christ is coming and we know Christ will come any moment from now. If you are a pastor like Noah and you preach all those many years and only your wife, your three sons and their three wives are the people that live in the grace of God, in the righteousness of God and the rest of the people, they're going to perish by the flood. What joy are you going to have? If you have members of your family and will be learning that we need to have salvation and the members of the family are careless of salvation, what joy are you going to have at the coming of the Lord? If we gather in our thousands in uh, you know great, great uh, gatherings and there is no real conversion, no real salvation, no victory over sin, uh, and then uh, Christ comes and only the saints are going to go with him when he comes, and all the other people that led behind what joy do we have but when the grace of God comes into our lives and we live in righteousness and we live in all sincerity and we live by the power of the grace of God in our lives and we live above evil we live above sin and we live victorious and we live righteous lives what's going to happen there will be joy when the Lord comes. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife, the bride, the virgin, has made herself ready. And then he says in verse 8, he says unto her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, spotless and white, blameless and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints the, the, the righteousness of the saints that's what he wants us to have there's only one way and only one place at calvary only one person from the lord jesus christ and when you surrender your heart your life unto him and you abandon your sin and you say you believe he died for you and he shed his blood for you what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus that blood will wash you you become as white as snow and then you'll have a new life and should the lord come at night in the evening morning afternoon in the day or night because of the righteousness of the saints thank god you'll make it in jesus name i will make it i will make it in jesus name we come to point number two now yeah, the consecration and the contribution of saints in all churches in all churches we're looking at first corinthians chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 1 now concerning the collection for the saints the collection for the saints the contribution for the saints as i have given order to the churches of galatia to the churches if we claim to be part of the church there are duties and responsibilities for the church. 
if we claim to be part of the church there are expectations for everyone who is a bona fide member of the church and if we're saints in the church in all churches there are things to be done and there are things the word of god compels us and commands us and says this must be done now concerning the collection for the saints as i have given order to the churches of galicia even so do ye look at verse 2 in verse 2 upon the first day of the week let everyone let everyone let everyone of you lay by him in storm as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come we're talking about the consecration and the contribution of saints not sinners not sinners not sinners saints in all the churches look at that verse 2 again upon the first day of the week let every one of you saints lay by him in store as god has prospered him not as satan has prospered him there are people that go into occultism and they go into occultic sacrifices to have money that's satan prospering them and god does not need the offering the contribution the collection that satan has produced other people they sell their body other people sell their conscience other people they negate the watch of god and through that sinning they get money it doesn't say to lay by him in store as sin as prospered him there are other people who are sensual and their sensuality produces money that's their job they sell evil and they sell fleshly pleasure to get money and it doesn't say to live by high in store as sensuality has prospered him in fact the word of god says god hates robbery for offering that's isaiah chapter 61 verse 8 god says he does not want the hire of the dog of the prostitute and the offering and so when we talk about saints and we talk about the consecration and the contribution of saints in all churches we must understand first of all god says my son my daughter give me your heart it is after you have given your heart to the lord and you are now a child of god you are saved and you are a member of the body of christ real real member and you are living a righteous life and the money you have you have it in a righteous way then as god the holy god the righteous god as god has prospered you now you bring your collection look at that i see at chapter 61 that i refer to now in verse 8 open your bible it says for i the lord love judgment i hate robbery for burnt offering i hate robbery for burnt offering so if we're doing a kind of work that does not honor god we're selling alcohol we're selling tobacco we're selling marijuana we're doing things that do not honor god or we're selling our body we're luring other people to sin and through that sin we are you know getting money or it is through crime cyber crime we're getting this and that 
God does not want that we must understand you have the calling of the sin the character of the sin then you can have the consecration the contribution of the saint in the church we're looking at first chronicles chapter 29 in first chronicles chapter 29 i'm reading from verse 11 it tells us first chronicles 29 verse 11 thine O lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and all that is in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all God owns everything look at verse 12 it says in verse 12 both riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all and in thine hand is power and might and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all the knowledge you have your child of God coming from God and the work you're able to do that's produced by God is the gift of God and the skill and the might and the intelligence and the vision and then the uh, what comes up out of it the fruitfulness all is of god and then is the one that gives you strength to have all that and then in verse 13 verse 13 now therefore our god we thank thee and we praise thy glorious name and then in verse 14 it tells us in verse 14 but who am i and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort for all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee understand of thine own have we given thee therefore there's no pride i give this is what god has everything belongs to god that we give unto god and then we give what we will know that i've given something that cost me something cost me something if you just uh, give uh, out of what you don't need you give remnants to god that means nothing you give something that doesn't cost you anything uh, that means nothing but of that which costs you something in second samuel chapter 24 verse 24 second samuel chapter 24 we're looking at verse 24 and the king said unto arauna nay but i will surely buy each of thee at a price look at this neither will i offer burnt offerings unto the lord my god of that which cost me nothing that which cost me nothing number one it will cost you your pride if you're proud and you're coming to God, before you can offer anything to God, it will cost you that pride. You have to lay that pride aside. It will cost you your boasting. Your boasting, I give this, I give this. Anytime they need anything, it's me, they come to you and they know who, who is uh, really contributing something. It will cost you your boasting. It will cost you uh, really to work extra and to devote yourself. It's not just that it's costing your money is costing you everything what you could have spent on other things you spend for the saints you spend for the church and you spend for the glory of the lord and for the propagation of the gospel it will cost you your sweat it will cost you your energy it will cost you your time i will not offer anything unto the lord of that which cost me nothing I pray the Lord will help us that will give sacrificially every time of our time, of our money, of our resources, of our ability, of our skill, of everything we have. And then we devote ourselves so completely to the Lord that you might even feel the pinch of what you are offering because what you offer to the Lord costs 
you something. It tells us in First Corinthians chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 15. It says, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves. You understand what that means? It means uh, you know, your heart is there. You don't feel complete if you are not offering. It's like something is missing. If you are not offering yourself, offering your skill, offering your money, offering everything you have for the service of the Lord, it drives you. Giving drives you, and giving actually is like there's a compulsion from within, and you are addicted to the care, addicted to the ministry, addicted to the contribution of the saints, and then to the church. It tells us in verse in verse in verse 19, it says, and the churches of Asia salute thee. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord and the church that is in their house. So it's not only giving money, you give your house, you give your property, you give your energy, you give your skill, you give everything and you are addicted to that. You know, whatever you spend for yourself will perish. You eat, everything will go to the drought. You drink, everything will go to, you know, uh, the waste. But the thing you give to the Lord and you sacrificially offer unto the Lord, that's what you have reward in all eternity. By the way, it mentioned uh, Priscilla and Aquila there. Look at Romans chapter 16. Uh, and we're looking at verse 3. Great Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Jesus. That's giving. That's giving my helpers whatever help is needed. That's what you offer. Help in the preaching of the gospel. Help in assisting the preachers of the gospel. Help in propagating the gospel. Help in follow up. Help in devoting ourselves to raising saints for God and establishing saints in the kingdom of God. My helpers in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 4. It says, who for my who have for my life laid down their own necks. They are the people who are not dodging, who are not running away from difficulty and from challenges. When challenges come for the preachers of the gospel, when uh, challenges come for the propagation of the gospel, they lay down their very necks, their very lives for the propagation of the gospel that the sacrifice we're talking about and that is the consecration that is the contribution we're making for the scriptures and for the gospel and for the expansion of the kingdom of god and every saint in the church is called on to do that it tells us they are for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. All the churches of the Gentiles. You understand how wide their influence, how wide their sacrifice, how wide their contribution. All that are outside Israel, outside the nation of Israel, the rest of the world, they are the Gentiles. And these Priscilla, and Aquila, they let no stones unturned. They let no, they kept no contribution for themselves. Uh uh, I need that one. Uh uh, we need that. Uh uh, in future, a rainy day, we need to save for the rainy day. They gave everything they had, not just for Israel, but for the Gentile world at large. And then it says in the first part of verse 5, it says, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. They didn't say, well, we've given money, we cannot give our house again. We laid down our necks for Paul the Apostle, we cannot give our house again, and we laid down everything, and we've sacrificed literally all that we have. They still said, our house is there, and you're looking for, you know, a church location, it's a 
room enough is spacious enough come and take the house for the worship of our god in heaven they gave themselves and they gave their property second corinthians chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 1 second corinthians chapter 8 read him from verse 1 moreover brethren we do you to which of the grace of god bestowed on the churches of macedonia have you noticed it's mentioning the churches in philippi mentioning the churches in galatia and mentioning the churches in macedonia is not just one local church we shouldn't have the idea that well uh, that particular church maybe the headquarters church uh, they are they are large and they should carry out the responsibilities all the churches churches whether they're in macedonia or they are in galatia or they are in philippi anywhere they are all those churches they all bound themselves together and they gave sacrificially and every sage every child of god every believer every follower of christ in all those churches not sparing anyone they gave of themselves look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty are Bounded unto the riches of their liberality. They had challenges too, they had great trials too, and they had, you know, the economic crunch also affecting them, but all the same because of their love. Their love overrided and overcame all the challenges they had. And then in verse 3, it tells us, For to their power I bear record, yea, beyond their power. They were willing of themselves. Nobody forced them nobody compelled them the compulsion came from within by the spirit of god directing them addicting them to the service of the saints they were willing of themselves in verse 4 it says praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints take upon us the ministry to the saints they said we know the saints in Jerusalem they have a need please take this and go and give unto them and they compelled us apostles and they compelled us the pastors to take what they have and go and give to those saints in need in verse 4 it tells us the beauty of how they gave uh, praying us with much entreaty in verse 5 verse 5 uh, it says and this they did not as we hoped not as well they went beyond our hope they went beyond our expectation we would have excused them we know their condition we know their poverty and we know the pressure on them we would not have demanded anything from them but this they did not as we hoped but first they gave their own selves to the lord they gave their hearts to the lord their mind to the Lord, their spirit to the Lord. They gave the whole of their personality unto the Lord. That's the first thing. Anybody can give heartlessly. The heart is not there. Anybody can give without the mind. The mind is not there. Anybody can give, okay, they want offering. They want contribution. Take this and, you know, at least you let us rest. But they gave their very heart. It says they gave of themselves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God and uh, that, that's what you expect from every child of God who understands I'm saved I belong to the Lord I'm redeemed I belong to the Lord and the sacrifice of Christ is what has brought me out of myself out of selfishness and has brought me to the kingdom I don't own anything I belong to the Lord and if I'm to give a tenth if I'm going to give a fifth if I'm going to give half of what I have it's all right because everything in the first place belongs to the Lord in Isaiah chapter 4 43 verse 7 I say chapter 43 we're reading from verse 7 it says even everyone 
if you are born again, even everyone, if you are saved, even everyone, if the sacrifice of Jesus has brought you out of sin, out of the world, and you are brought into the kingdom of God, if you are grateful to God that it is through what Christ gave, he gave his all. That is how you got saved. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, not for the world. Not for Satan, not to build the perishing world. I've created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. And then in verse 21, he tells us, These people have I formed for myself. How can they not give their time to me? These people have I formed for myself. How can they not give their skill? How can they not give their energy? How can they not give their knowledge? How can they not give everything they have and give it cheerfully unto me? These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Revelation chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 4. Reading from verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, all people that was created all things, and for thy pleasure. They are and were created. We're not created for our own pleasure. I want to have this. I want to take this. I want to spend this. I want to consume that. We're created not for ourselves. We're created for Him. And the Spirit of God be leading us. That is needed by the kingdom of God. Is in your hand. God deposited it there. So that at this time, when it is needed for the kingdom, you voluntarily and willingly and pleasurably bring it out so that it will be used for the expansion of the kingdom of God. And in that way, you consecrate. In that way, you lay everything upon the altar and who you are, what you have, everything will be for the glory of God and for the expansion of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Point number three now is the collection and the care, the collection of the care for saints in crisis. We're coming back to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading from verse 1 now concerning collection, the collection for the saints. Now concerning the collection for the saints. You are a saint. I should be a saint. We should all be saints. That saint is in need now. You might be in need tomorrow. That sage is in crisis now. You might be in crisis tomorrow. There is a need, there is a crisis, there is a demand in the life of that sin today. It may come to your turn tomorrow. And when it's the turn of other people, you contribute and you care. And then when it comes to your turn, we contribute and we care. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches, all the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. In verse 2 it says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him his toll. What does that mean? I keep this apart. I'm not to consume everything I have. I lay that in store. I set that apart. It's for the care of the saints. It's for the care of the, of the church. It's for the care, for the progress of the work the Lord has given us in the church. And I lay that in store as God has prospered him. As God has prospered him. If God has prospered me more than he has prospered you, I'll give more than you give. If God has prospered you more than he has prospered him or her, you will give more than she, than he is going to give. If you have skill that the rest of us don't have, you have ability the rest of us don't have, you have the training the rest of us do not have, you have the knowledge that the rest of us do not have, you have provision that the rest of us do not have, you have the finance, you have the money, the funds that the rest of us do not have, as 
God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. What that means is that it is not that every time we'll be saying, we, have, we need this now, we need this now, we'll make an announcement, make an announcement. Every time you lay by yourself, you lay in store, you lay apart, what you know will be needed and the work will be provided for in such an abundant way that will not be, you know, making the announcement every time it says in verse 3, it says and when I come whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters letters of recommendation them will I send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem Jerusalem was the headquarters church and all the other churches of the Gentiles they were to contribute and they were to uh, pay they were to contribute whatever will be able to satisfy the need of the headquarters church it's just like our own deeper life bible church we have our headquarters here and this is our jerusalem and it is from here the word of god is going out is from here we're sending the word and that calls a lot and so all the other churches in nigeria the other churches in africa the other churches in europe the other churches everywhere they lay by them in storm that when the time comes they know how to send that their liberality unto their Jerusalem unto the headquarters for the maintenance of the work that is going to be a blessing to the rest of the world and then in verse 5 it says in verse 4 it says and if it be meet if it be necessary that I go also Look at the language. If it's necessary for me that I like said, you choose the people you recommend and they will take the offering, they will take the collection, they will take it to Jerusalem. But then if it is necessary for me to go, he didn't say I will go with them because it's a puzzle because it's the leader it's not that he will go with them if it's necessary for him to go then he will lead the way and they shall go with me and let us look at acts of the apostles chapter 11 we're reading from verse 28 acts chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 28 and there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great death famine throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. There was scarcity, there was famine in all the world, and it affected Jerusalem, the headquarters. It was a biting need at the headquarters church at that time. And then in verse 29, then the disciples, every man according to his ability as God has prospered us as God has prospered them every man according to his ability that means you're not say I'm so poor I cannot give no you have ten you give one you have hundred you give ten you got you have a thousand then you give one hundred you have a hundred thousand then you give the ten thousand it's proportion proportion it as god has prospered you if you have little out of that little as god has prospered you you give little if you have much of that much as god has prospered you you give much then the disciples every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea and then in Bastachi it says which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul sent by the hand of of Barnabas and Saul. We're coming to Second Corinthians and we're reading from verse chapter 8 verse 11. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 11. Now therefore perform the doing of it. You have heard, do it. You have learned, 
put it to practice. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now therefore that you have learned, now therefore that you have known, perform the doing of it that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have out of that which you have there's a willingness there's a readiness i've heard the word of god all that is coming costs money and because of that i will do my part and it is not only in one local church all the churches all the contribution will come and then we'll make progress in the work of the lord in jesus name we're looking at first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 16 first john chapter 3 we're reading from verse 16 it's telling us hereby perceive with the love of god because he laid down his life for us the love of god is not an empty proclaimed love i love them but nothing comes out there's no giving there's no sacrifice, there's no help, there's no support, there's no contribution. I love God, I love the word, I love the church, I love the work of God, and I want the work of God to prosper. If everybody did like that man who offers nothing, who contributes nothing, who is always looking for other people to give, if everybody did like that, how will the work of God in the church prosper? It says hereby, perceive with the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. When you make the gospel a available to the brethren when laying down what we have when you make uh, your resources and the funds and your energy and your skill and your ability available to provide the gospel for the brethren that will lift them up not only to feed their body to feed their soul and to feed their spirit and to lift them up and to encourage them and to strengthen them when we do that and we lay down what we have uh, for the help for the support and for the spiritual upliftment of the brethren that's what he's talking about well to lay down our very lives for the brethren in verse 17 it says but also as this world's good and seeth his brother have need but and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him also has this world's goods you have the knowledge that will help your brother but you close your mouth you have the vision that will help your sister but you close your mouth you have the provision that will lift them up that will energize them encourage them prepare them get them from the from the despondency and and the depth and what they are into it, and you close you you close up and you're not offering anything you have the gospel that will help other people you're not giving out you have the information the divine information and the revelation that will lift them up and you know how to do it you know how to talk to them and you know how to touch their lives and you are not doing it and you shut up they you shut you shut up your bowel of compassion from them how dwelleth the love of god in him in verse 18 it says my little children saints of god again let us not love in word let us not love in word let us not love in only talking, love in preaching, love in singing, love in giving testimony, love in, you know, I love the church, I love you, I love everyone, love fills my heart and it never comes out. Don't let it be only in song, only in word. Little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And I pray the Lord will help everyone one of us or our love in a practical way in jesus name if the church still at home i said we're loving jesus name 
Matthew chapter 10, we're reading from verse 40. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. In verse 41, it says, He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man man shall receive a righteous man's reward in verse 42 it says and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple you give a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple that means because it's a disciple of Christ because this is what Christ has commanded because this is the project that Christ himself is interested in and you give something even at the cost of a cup of cold water and you give that out of your heart and if you give more than that you give more and then you give that because this is of the Lord verily I say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward you will not lose your reward here on earth and there in eternity, you'll not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 34. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, Then shall the king, that the king of kings, capital K there, that the lord of laws, that the king of the whole universe, the king of saints, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, on that final day, I pray you'll be on the right hand side. I said you'll be on the right hand side. There'll be those who'll be on the left hand side. The scripture refers to them as goats. They're stubborn. They're willful. They're rebellious. And they're not going to listen to the Lord. No matter what they hear. And no matter the spirit of God talking to them. And telling them this is the way walk here therein. They're goats. They'll be on the left hand side. I'll not be on the left hand side. I will not be on the left hand side. But to those on the right hand side, you say, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In verse 35, for I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. And then in verse 36, it says, Naked, and ye closed me. I was sick, and ye he visited me. I was in prison and he came unto me. Verse 37, they shall the righteous. Remember, these are saints. If you are unrighteous, whatever you are given has no record in heaven. If you're a sinner and you're living in sin and the work you're doing is destroying lives and you are maybe stealing or whatever and then you're giving something, you're not righteous, that one doesn't have record but the people who are saved, the people who are born again, the people who are righteous and the people who are saints in Christ, then shall the righteous answer him saying Lord, when so with thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and give thee drink in verse 38 it says when so with thee a stranger and took thee in and naked or naked and closed thee you see many people they don't recognize when you see a saint of God Christ dwells in him Christ dwells in her and if she has need you see Christ in her you see Christ on him and because of the Christ you see on him on her because of Christ you don't look at him as a stranger anymore you are not tribalistic and you are not nationalistic and you are not saying it's for my tribe it's for a nation if he's a believer and you and he 
crosses your way and you see there's a need there is hungry is naked is thirsty is a stranger you take them in naked and you close them in verse 39 it says or when so with thee seek or in prison and came unto thee here comes verse 40 now and verse 40 says and the king capital k the king of kings and the lord of lords our savior our redeemer our rewarder on that final day and the king shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you in as much as he have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me you have done it unto me and yours uh, if you're being the word of god you are born again you're a saint of god you have the calling of the saint, the character of the saint, the consecration of the saint, the contribution of the saint, and also the collection and the care for the saints and you do it from all your heart and you give what you have and you give who you have for the service of god and for the propagation of the gospel and for the care of the saints of the children of god you do it from your heart great will be your reward on the final day in jesus name even here on earth the lord will reward you as we take care of other people the lord will take care of you as we visit other people the lord will support you when you come to the crossroad and to your own time of difficulty to in jesus name in life here the lord will show is your father because you have shown yourself you're a child of god you're a saint of god and then in eternity great and eternal will be your joy in jesus name and the whole church said amen Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. We've learned a lot today. Let's bring what we've learned to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord himself, the Lord himself will begin to reward you here on earth and also all through eternity. Let's thank the Lord for what God has taught us tonight.